Well, good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So I've been making notebooks uh, here and there. So this is one of my notebooks I made that I'm really proud of. This was the uh, thread stitched style of binding that my friend Ethan showed me how to make. Oh, by the way, the original cream colored textured paper cover with the custom photo of the typewriter, it's still there. The cover's still there. This is a Trader Joe's brown paper sack protective cover that I put on here just to keep it nice while I'm using it. Uh, this particular notebook, we just sliced off the corners uh, at an angle, a 45 degree angle, but other notebooks, other smaller notebooks I've done, I've uh, done rounded corners, and uh, I used to have a little cheap corner punch, but I decided I needed to get a new corner punch that was a little bit better, does rounded corners a little bit nicer, and I found this one online, this was on Amazon, and it is a Japanese brand of corner punch with three different size radiuses. So let's look at it, shall we? Stay tuned. You might be thinking, well, how exciting is a corner punch video going to be, Joe? Well, uh, yeah, it's just a corner punch. That's all it is. But it's a three-way corner punch, and I think it, equally important for me is this is an artifact packaged and sold in Japan with Japanese packaging and labeling. It's different. It has a different kind of packaging, a different kind of aesthetic, and of course the language. So the whole thing is just a different feel to it. I'm interested in it, and it looks like it's pretty high quality. So these are some of the handmade notebooks I've made over the years, and I have used corner punches with these, and I really think they do improve the look of the notebook, having the outside corners punched like that. It just makes for a neater appearance. Uh, you know, you could just trim it with scissors and try to get by, but it's going to be kind of tedious, and you won't be, get as good of a result. Okay, this is the packaging. This is a Japanese-made product sold in Japan, apparently because there's almost all uh, kanji. So it's uh, made by Sunstar, Katomaru, and it's the pro type punch. And it advertises a small, medium, and large size uh, radius. So three millimeters, five and eight millimeter radius, which is interesting. Now, if you're interested, or if you're a student of packaging and marketing, you might know that a lot of these kind of products that come in kind of a bubble package are stapled together. What's interesting about this one, uh, obviously made for the domestic Japanese market is that uh, you'll notice that instead of having staples on here they have this little cardboard tab that sticks out of a slot in the plastic and all you have to do is kind of release that cardboard tab in order to undo the product from the packaging instead of having to tear off a staple. I just think that's kind of a little elegant solution there. Well, there is the punch. Isn't that a neat little device? So I guess, apparently, according if I read the instructions right, this thing has three positions. And um, it looks like it is fixed. Like, this doesn't rotate. But apparently, um, you have the large sizes here, the medium size is here, and the small size is here. Then there is a reservoir, and it releases right here and enables you to dispose of your chads, your, your punch uh, corners. So, okay, let's try just one sheet of plain old uh, copy paper, printer paper. So we'll start with the small size here. So there's very little travel in the lever. It doesn't move much. And then we'll do the third one, the large one, in this corner here. So there is the smallest, there is the medium one, and there is the larger one. So that was easy to do with one sheet of paper. Okay, let's see about doubling our sheet of paper. Eh, no problem at all. Let's double it up again. So that feels like that's probably about as far as you want to go with four sheets of paper. Let's try the medium punch on four sheets. Hey, that's pretty good. And the small one. Not bad. So it is pretty small. 
I mean, it's nice having three different sizes. Okay, so dare we uh, go to eight sheets of paper? I don't know if I want to do that. We'll try it here. Nope, we'll not do eight sheets of paper. So about four sheets of standard printer paper is about all it'll do. But here's some cardstock. Let's try that. Yeah, works good, small. Yeah, medium and large. Very good. Yeah, it looks like it works fine. So we should be able to open this guy up. And there is our, our chads ready to be disposed of. Now as I look in the bottom here, the three cutting blades are accessed by these three dark gray brackets and it looks like you can take off these screws and these plastic pieces will come off and it looks like they might hold the cutting blade so perhaps there is a replacement cutting blade I don't know if that's uh, in the instructions I don't think they were there they are but pop perhaps you can get replacement cutting blades don't know but it looks like it's pretty well made just from looking at it here I like the build quality and the way the parts are, so that's pretty cool. So I think one thing important to point out here is that each of the cutting sections has a little plastic guides for the 90 degree angle of your corner, and especially with the smallest one, you want to really get it in there and make sure that both sides of your paper are firmly up against those two surfaces so that you'll get an even radius. Otherwise, you could get an uneven cut. Like, for instance, this one here, you might notice that radius is not very even. So I should be able to put it back in the medium size one here, make sure both sides are touching here. That's not bad. Well, it's nice having the flexibility of three different sizes of corner punch radius. So here's the corner of one of my neat notebooks that I was using with this other punch that I had purchased some time ago from Hobby Lobby and um, it's nice though having the choice of three different radiuses like here's the smallest one and the medium one and then the large one looks pretty close to what the other one, old one was but I think for this size little notebook, I really think maybe this medium size corner might end up looking a little nicer. Not such a huge radius, right? Just nicely rounded, but not too small. And I kind of like that. So I like with this non-destructive packaging that perhaps I can, uh, I can put this back in the package when I'm not using it. Because it doesn't use a staple, instead it uses this little cardboard tab that goes in the slot like that, which is really cool because now I can just slip it back together and it's stored safely and conveniently for me to use again. That's pretty cool. Okay, so reading through the instructions, they also indicated that you might have problems using the punch if you're using too thin of paper. So I have some thin newspaper advertisement flyers. I don't know if this is too thin or not, but we'll give it a shot here. Let's see. Well, that works fine, at least in the large size. Let's try that medium one. Not bad. I think the medium blade feels a little dull or something. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. Let's try the small one. Yeah, it works. That seems more than adequate. I don't know if you want to go any thinner than this thin newspaper flyer kind of paper, but it looks like it works fine. Now what about several layers of this thin paper? Of some hanging chads right here. So that could be a problem with thin paper. Well, okay, so how does this punch compare to that other simpler craft punch that I bought from Hobby Lobby some time ago, which I, by the way, don't have with me to show you, but this one, the large size radius of eight millimeters 
is about the same size as that, that punch. And of course, that punch only had one size. This one has three. It looks like this punch is a little bit more finicky with really super thin paper, especially multiple layers. And so you gotta be careful with that. I think I never really had that problem with that other punch. The other punch was undoubtedly cheaper. Uh, it was under $10. This was, I think, between $10 and $20, if I'm not mistaken. This is certainly built better and more mechanically intricate. It looks like it's serviceable. It looks like the blades are replaceable. The real advantage of this, I think, is having three different sizes. The disadvantage is a little bit higher price and the cutting, especially on this particular item, the middle size doesn't quite cut as good as the large and the small. That could be just sample variation here. Well, I'm a person who's uh, always tried to be a little bit thrifty with my hobby stuff. I don't like to go out and buy all the toys and all the accessories and all the fancy tools and fixtures if I can avoid it. I like kind of making my, a lot of my own stuff. But uh, for the point of crafting and making little booklets and things, having these little corner punches is kind of a neat thing. It's hard to do this neatly on your own by hand, right? So, I mean, you could, you know, obviously take a razor knife and try to whittle the corners. It's never going to be that good. You could make a little fixture like a piece of plywood or thin sheet metal to use as a template and do some trimming. Yeah, you could get away with it, but having a little tool like that is I think it's a cool thing. So I splurged and hopefully this will add to my notebook making uh, craft here. It'll be fun. But anyways, oh, just another little review of a little crafty tool, a corner punch. This is Joe Van Cleve. Hey, drop a note down below. I'd love to hear from you. And until next time, stay safe, stay creative, and have yourselves a good day. Bye-bye.